The Sorento is Kia's largest SUV, and this fourth generation model offers the kind of typically complete package we now expect from the brand. This enhanced design is embellished by electrified engine tech, smarter looks, and advanced media connectivity. And as before, it sells in the upper part of the SUV D segment, offering more space and 4x4 prowess than cheaper class contenders provide. For us, it seems strange to be driving a Kia Sorento and not to be hearing a familiar diesel rumble from beneath the bonnet. And it will be for many customers of previous generation versions of this car. A diesel can still be had with this car. The brand's familiar 199 brake horsepower 2.2 litre CRDI unit. But the Korean maker wants to persuade you that a petrol hybrid engine is, going forward, a better solution. Uh, specifically, a 1.6 litre sized one. There are two options available here, a 226 brake horsepower, full hybrid, self-charging HEV model, and the pricier 261 brake horsepower, uh, plug-in PHEV variant that we're trying here today. There are certainly disadvantages to using a petrol engine this small in capacity. Towing capability for one thing, which is rated at a modest 1,650 kilos in the HEV and uh, 1,500 kilos for this PHEV. But otherwise, the SmartStream power plant equips itself quite well and comes non-negotiably mated to a six-speed automatic gearbox and a 4x4 drivetrain. There are certainly lots of advantages to choosing the PHEV model we're trying here. It gets a gutsier 90 horsepower electric motor than the one used in the HEV version and of course has a larger drive battery, 13.8 kilowatt hours in size, uh, which gives you a surprisingly achievable 35 mile all electric driving range before the 1.6 litre TGDI engine cuts in rather vocally actually. But there's a big price to pay for plug-in hybrid tech, so Kia expects the majority of Sorento customers to settle for the self-charging HEV version of this car, although its feebler 59 brake horsepower electric motor rarely powers this SUV for long. Uh, the alternative diesel we mentioned earlier, which swaps the six-speed auto gearbox of the hybrids for the eight-speed DCT automatic transmission, will feel a lot stronger through the gears, and of course it'll be better off-road. But of course, in terms of efficiency, it can't get anywhere near this PHEV variant, which is officially WLTP rated at 176.6 mpg on the combined cycle and 38 grams per kilometre of CO2. Previous generations of the Sorento have been a little anonymous and forgettable, but this fourth generation design is out to rectify that. This car certainly now makes more of an overtaking statement. Kia's familiar tiger nose grille is here much wider and flanked by piercing LED headlamps featuring distinctive daytime running lights modelled apparently on a tiger's eye line. In profile, you get a sense of the continuing growth that's characterised the Sorento model line throughout its various generations. This Mark IV design is 5mm taller and it gains another 10mm of length, taking the parking space size you'll need to well over 4.8 metres, which, to give you some class perspective, actually puts it closer to a full-fat, large-segment Land Rover Discovery rather than the mid-sized Discovery Sport model that it's been priced against. Perhaps most distinctive, though, is the tailgate treatment, borrowed from Kia's even larger US market Telluride SUV, a model the UK doesn't see. Perhaps that explains a touch of Ford Mustang and the styling of these LED tail lamps. The cabin quality on show here is certainly a big step forward from anything we've ever seen from Kia before. Uh, you still probably wouldn't think you were in a premium brand model, but the dashboard's uh, shelf-like design has some interesting flourishes, uh, like the unusual shaping of these uh, central vents here. And we think that most customers will really like the way that the high-set driving position offers you such a commanding view of the road ahead of you. Uh, get comfortable behind the leather-stitched uh, three-spoke wheel here. And one of the first things that you're going to notice is that the instrument binnacle, this now features a single 12.3-inch screen with two virtual dials and the customizable information section in the middle. Uh, anything this display can't tell you will probably be covered off instead by the infotainment monitor, and that flows out of the instrument binnacle to top this center stack here. This would be eight inches in size with base two spec trim as here, but with the two more opulent trim levels, uh, you're favored instead with a preferable 
10.25 inch touchscreen display. You also get supportive seats and the wide range of cabin stowage cubbies that you'd want in a family SUV. Right, time to take a seat in the second row, space in which ought to be aided by this fourth generation model's 35mm increase in wheelbase length. As usual in a seven seat SUV, the bench slides back and forth and the backrest reclines, and that allows second row folk to prioritise either their legroom or that of those behind. Right, time to take a look in the third row. That relatively high floor height means that, as with most cars in this class, you sit rather with your knees up towards the level of your stomach, but otherwise it is reasonably comfortable back here, by class standards anyway, although adults won't obviously want to be confined here for too long. Right, let's finish with a look in the boot. It's only electrically powered if you avoid the base two level of trim we have here. The hatch opens to a wide square shaped load bay with a nice flat entry floor. It's not massively spacious of course with the third seating row up like this, but the 179 litre capacity provided in this format is enough for a couple of carry-on suitcases and it embarrasses the 115 litre space that you'd have with a similarly configured Land Rover Discovery Sport. Much of the time you're going to want to tug on the pull straps on the backs of these third row chairs and fold them into the floor. Uh, that frees up 604 litres of space in this PHEV model. It's 608 litres in the HEV and 616 litres with the diesel. If you need more room, the second row seating can be folded from the boot area by these right-hand cargo sidewall buttons, although reinstating those chairs has to be done manually from the side doors in the usual way. Uh, anyway, once everything's nice and flat, you get up to 1,988 litres of space with this plug-in hybrid. It's 1,996 litres with a self-charging hybrid, and it's 2,011 litres with the diesel. And in summary, while well, those familiar with the Amalfi Coast might still feel the Sorrento to be lacking an R, a glance at the spec sheet doesn't immediately suggest it's lacking very much else. In short then, for all kinds of reasons, we think this is now a contender that you'd like rather than merely one that it would be very handy to have. The kind of SUV that might surprise you, as increasingly modern Kias tend to do.